I want to bring up some really, actually, very tragic news. Uh, the death of Sheikh Haider Adnan, the Palestinian mm-hmm. political prisoner who just died Tuesday morning after an 87-day hunger strike. Uh, we actually have an image of him. Uh, this is him when he's uh, healthy with some of his children. And then this is an image of him um, once he had started his hunger strike. Um, what do people need to know about him? Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really glad that you brought up Khadr Adnan's case. What people need to know, I mean, there's a lot of things that people need to know about Khadr Adnan, one of which is, you know, before his death and now certainly after his death, he has become an icon of Palestinian resistance to Israeli oppression. I mean, Khadr Adnan was only 45 years old, and this was at least the 11th time that he had been arrested and imprisoned by the Israelis. Over the past 18 years, eight of those years, uh, more or less, were spent behind bars. And what's really important to note about Khadr Adnan's story is that for much of his detention, including his most recent detention, over which he went on strike and over which, you know, because he died over it, is his most recent detention was under a policy called administrative detention, which is this policy that Israel uses almost exclusively against Palestinians to imprison people without charge or trial. So Khadr Adnan was in prison for almost three months. He's been on hunger strike for almost three months. He died as a result of this hunger strike, and he was never formally charged with a crime. He was never indicted. He never had his day in court. He was never put on trial. This thing that we talk about called due process was something that he was never afforded. And his case is definitely an exceptional case, but it's by no means a unique case. I mean, there are thousands of Palestinians over the years who have been put under have been imprisoned for months and even years under this policy of administrative detention. And currently there are dozens of Palestinians, including children, who are being imprisoned by Israeli authorities under under this policy. And so what happened to Khadr Adnan, the fact that he had to starve himself to death in protest of this extremely inhumane policy is... It's not something that should be taken lightly. And, you know, Israel essentially imprisoned him over his political affiliations because he was affiliated with the Palestinian Islamic Jihad movement, which Israel and the U.S. considered to be a terror group, though they could never actually prove or never had any concrete evidence that Khadr Adnan actually uh, participated in any of the military decisions or the military wing of Islamic Jihad. It was all basically suspicions of his involvement and his political affiliation. So you essentially have a man who was imprisoned for a significant portion of his life simply over his political affiliations, and eventually he he was killed for it, and he he starved to death for it. What were his demands? So his demands, I mean, first and foremost, were to end Israel's, you know, targeted harassment campaign against him, which had been ongoing for several decades, um, an end to the policy of administrative detention and imprisoning Palestinians without charge or trial, very, you know, simple demands, an end to his arbitrary arrest and detention. And also Khadr Adnan's wider demands over the years have been demands for uh, the rights of Palestinian prisoners and overall for, you know, he's even in his death and his will, he's called for freedom and liberation for the Palestinian people. I mean, so yes, he was, he was striking for his own well being and his own freedom, but always within his strikes, this most recent one and over the years, um, he very much was striking for the rights of all Palestinians and for the freedoms of all Palestinians. And that's a message that he solidified in his, in his final will and Testament most recently in his death. And they are, the Israeli forces are holding his body. They're not giving his body to his family. Yeah. So the most recent, I mean, as far as I know, unless things have, have changed um, in the past, you know, hour or so. As far as we know, the Israeli government is still continuing to hold his body and is refusing to release it to his family for burial. And again, this seems like 
such an exceptionally cruel kind of policy. You know, you imprison someone without ever charging them or convicting them of anything. They go on hunger strike, they die, and then you refuse to release their body even for, you know, their family to to have a proper burial. But this is a very common policy and a very common tactic used by Israeli uh, by Israeli occupation forces. Um, it's one used against Palestinians who are accused of committing attacks against Israelis. And it's also used against Palestinian political prisoners who die in, in, in prison. Um, more often than not, is Israeli authorities will hold the body of the prisoner um, to serve out their sentence, basically. If they die in the middle of a 20-year sentence, they might say, well, we're not going to release the body for another X amount of years until they've completed this, the sentence. In the case of Khadr Adnan, you know, he never actually had an allotted sentence, but they're still holding his body. Um, and this is, you know, very commonly understood as just another torture tactic for, for the Palestinian people and for Palestinian families to continue to um, suppress any sort of, you know, resistance to to the Israeli occupation or to Israeli oppression. And so despite calls from the ICRC and other human rights organizations, Israel is still refusing to release his body. And it's important to know, finally, that for, for Muslims, um, the burials, the burial of Muslims is very sacred and there's a very, um, you know, strict process that people adhere to. And one of the tenets of Islamic burials is being able to bury your loved one at the, basically as fast and as soon as possible. Oftentimes people are buried within hours of the time that they, that they pass away. And so there's another added level of cruelty in this and that Israel is not only denying this family the ability to say goodbye to their loved one, but they're also denying their religious right to bury their loved one according to their religious practices.